Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. Today we're looking at this. This is a Rickenbacker 360. Now you don't see many people actually playing these anymore. And they used to be a really popular guitar. I'd say anything from the sort of 1960s where got bands like the Beatles playing them up to sort of Britpop, I guess, in the 1990s. And now you don't really see them because I think guitar has moved on and they've got a very specific sound. Now, it's a really fantastic quality guitar, built really, really well, but there's a couple of things about the Rickenbackers that make them actually quite hard to play. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is talk through the whole sort of spec on the guitar, what all the controls do, because it does do things that are slightly different to, or quite a bit different to most other guitars. And then we'll try some sort of various styles on them and I'll show you the limitations of these guitars. Now, as I said before, the build quality in these guitars are absolutely fantastic and they should be because they're not cheap guitars, but where a lot of vintage guitar brands either got it right at the beginning so more or less, say like brands like Fender, uh, not so much Gibson, Rickenbacker have stayed true to their original designs. Now that's not always a good thing, and that is a reason why I think a lot of modern guitar players don't play Rickenbackers. So we'll start from the top down. Now, if you look at the headstock, and you look at the angle of the strings going to the tuning pegs, like Gibson, you've got this quite hard angle. Now that's not great for tuning stability and that is why on a lot of Gibson guitars, you sort of get tuning stability issues between the G and the D string. Now with the Rickenbacker, it's the same, but you can see why Rickenbacker did this because they wanted to get, or I imagine this is the case, they wanted to get their logo in full view. So they compromised their tuning stability just so you could see the brand name. Now, as we start to move down the guitar, this is where a lot more modern manufacturers have perfected their instruments and Rickenbacker have stayed sort of true to their heritage. First of all, you get extremely low frets and you get a lacquered fingerboard. Now, what that doesn't enable you to do is to bend easily and your fingers tend to feel like they're sticky on the neck. Now, a Rickenbacker is fantastic for open chords and all that. But as soon as you start getting further up the neck, now if you'd have seen my face when I was playing that, I'm really having to concentrate and I'm struggling with bends because the frets are so low and we've got this quite sticky fingerboard where I'm having to work really hard with my left hand, where when I bend a string, the string's sort of fighting and it wants to get right underneath my fingers. And it's quite hard to judge the pitch. Rickenbacker invented the guitar pickup, so they should know a few things about guitar pickups. Now, these pickups on this 360 are single coil style pickups, but they're called their high gain pickups. There is absolutely nothing high gain about these pickups, so God knows why they called them that. Even if I compare this to something like a Telecaster or a Strat, a Strat and a Telecaster has way more output than this, but they do really add to that unique sound of this guitar. <laughs>
though they are extremely low output pickups, they do sound really great. So moving on with this guitar, you've got your basic sort of Gibson Les Paul wiring, apart from this last control, and I'll go through that in the middle. So we've got our standard three-way switch, which is your bridge pickup. <laughs> which is extremely low gain. And if I had some drive to that, they definitely don't work with a lot of drive. Now the drive that I was using for that was a Duelist pedal and I'm on the Blues Breaker setting. So not a particularly overly high gain pedal, but it doesn't deal with overdrive that well. Next, we've got a middle position. which for me is definitely the best tone on this guitar because you get the blend of that real sort of treble piercing sort of sound on the on the bridge pickup, but also the warmth from the neck. If I switch to the neck position, It's a really nice sort of mellow, warm sound. Now, we've also got our two volume controls and our two tone controls. And we've also got this extra control down here, which is called a blend. Now what Reckenbacker decided to do with the blend control, because the neck pickup has more output than the bridge pickup, and I'll demonstrate that. There's the neck. There's the bridge. Now with the blend control at its off position, which is all the way wound back, it's basically off. As you bring in the blend control, it adds some resistance to the circuits. So as I've read, it was originally designed to bring down the level of the pickup. Now that's all well and good, but what's happening here is we're lowering the tone as well as the volume. So that's with it completely engaged. And that's with it out. Now the last thing about this guitar, and I actually think this is quite a good idea, we've actually got two outputs. The first one is labeled standard, and the second one is the Rico sound output. Now basically what we can do with this guitar is to have two separate outputs going to two separate amps. So we've got like a stereo guitar. Now the reason why that is so great is because the pickup sound so different, we can actually have an amplifier for the bridge pickup, so you can deal with that harshness and we can actually have a separate amplifier for the rhythm pickup or the neck pickup. So it makes it a really useful guitar for that. But not only have you got to buy a really expensive guitar, but you've also then got to go and buy two amplifiers to deal with the sound. Now coming out the standard output, it works exactly as a normal guitar would. So both pickups via the switch come through one lead into one amp. So you can deal with it that way. So would I buy a Rickenbacker? Well, out of all the guitars that I've got, probably the sound that I'm missing is a Rickenbacker type of sound because it does sound very different to say like a Telecaster or a Strat or a Les Paul, etc. So yes, I would buy one. Would I use it much? It will probably come out maybe once a year for that sort of special recording where it needed that sort of sound. Anyway, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. I really hope you guys got something out of this. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul and I'll see you next time. Cheers.